everybody. Welcome back. I am excited that uh, you're here and that I'm here and I am ready to do another session of Journal Through It. So um, I'm Kim Santini. If you are just joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, Ardith Goodwin and I are delivering some journaling tips, tools, prompts, and inspirations each day over, uh, well, geez, this is week three. We're almost at the end of week three, but um, I plan to continue doing this for a little bit longer. It looks like the, um, the, the quarantine is gonna last a bit longer too. And um, anyway, so this is our Journal Through It project. And today I wanna talk to you about lines and contour lines. But before I jump into that, um, I wanted to show you an update with some of the circle pieces that I had done in the previous lesson and let you know that I am really inspired and enjoying all of the ones that you have been sharing too. Uh, this is a postcard that I did and I think you can see I added some glitter into one of the circles and embellished them with a few other things. And this will be going out in the mail to somebody special today. Uh, this is another piece of, of postcard art that I did where instead of painting inside the circle, I painted around the circle with some white gesso and left the image reveal. So if you missed the last video that I shared, these were, or we worked with the idea of circles and making tokens that represented things that we loved or appreciated or enjoyed or treasured uh, and that will be in the last video on my uh, journal through it page which is on my website KimberlySantini.com so yesterday I also shared um, a quick little prompt with the idea of an initial letter or an initial page I forgot to grab that book this morning when I was staging for the lesson but there is a link that takes you to some uh, illustrated or illuminated manuscripts online and you can take a look at some of the really fabulous intricate detailing that they did with initial pages and I challenged everyone to create their own initial page. There were some really cool ones showing up last night. So um, there's also that challenge. So today I wanna to talk about um, something that we've been doing quite a bit uh, in, in a number of the exercises, but we didn't like actively practice it on its own or in isolation. And that's the idea of contour drawing. So when one is doing a contour drawing, uh, what one does is they, they look for just the edges, the contours of a shape. Now, this is a contour drawing I did earlier this morning and the lighting has changed. Uh, since I the lighting on, on my doughboy here has changed. Um, but I think you get the idea that you the artist uses their eye and they follow around the perimeter of the shape with the marker or whatever their tool is and they find the edges where light or shadow hit and they and they create lines showing that space. Uh, contour drawing is not meant to be a super precise type of drawing. It's meant to be a quick, fun way to capture the essence of an object, to capture the shape of it, the quality of its lines, the play of light and dark. Um, contour drawing is a great way if you do um, plein air sketching or uh, urban sketching. It's a great way to get the scene down real quickly. Um, without expending a whole lot of time into, uh, into capturing tight detail and having your light change. Um, but I love contour drawing because it's quick, it's fun, it's playful, and it gives me the opportunity to really explore um, an object in, in great detail without committing to a certain angle. So I wanna show you or I'll do a demonstration here for you of how, how to actually manage or see your contours. For those of you who haven't done this before, 
Um, this is just a page from a catalog and as you can see there's some really wonderful detail here in the silverware handles. So if I were to do a contour drawing of this, where did my pencil go? Here it is. This is just a piece of deli paper which I use as um, tracing, tracing paper quite a bit in the studio. And this is just a regular pencil. So if I were can, if I were to do a contour drawing of this particular handle, what I want to do is find the areas, the edges of the light areas and the edges of the dark areas. And I'm just simply going to put a line there. And I'm just following or tracing these light and dark shapes. So I'm not going to apply any shading, I'm not going to give any half tones. My lines when I do a contour drawing are typically all the same weight, or my line quality doesn't really shift when I'm doing a contour drawing. That would be a more precise sort of drawing itself. And here, contour drawings have, tend to be hard-edged and purely linear. And they really just represent the shapes that we see, the shapes of light and the shapes of dark. And I'm going to pull this off in just a second. I didn't realize how how nuanced this detail or this pattern was. It's really quite lovely. Okay, so do you see? Let's bring this in a little bit closer so that you can see it. Do you see how this shape here, this form of this of the knife handle has been reduced to just lines that delineate the light shapes against the dark shapes. There is no shading, it's just a matter of finding the lines, the edges. You're drawing where the light hits, which would be these lighter areas, and you're drawing edges where the light doesn't hit, which are these darker areas. So let me know if you have any questions about the concept of contour drawing and I'll, I'll make a point to go back and answer them at the end of the video. And hopefully that little demo showed you um, or was a better illustration than any words could explain. So when I was in college, we did this thing every at the beginning of every um, life drawing session called gesture drawings or gesture studies and we would have a big pad of 18 by 24 paper in front of us and we would fold it up, I think we folded it into 16 squares and then we did smaller gesture drawings inside each of those 16 squares and it was a really great way to warm up and get our juices going and also a really fascinating way to fill a page with marks. Um, and so I was thinking that it would be really fun to take that idea of doing gesture studies, but do them in a contour drawing format um, and, and use something we have at home, which is our hands, and some little objects or treasures that we love. I've collected, I've collected a few things here. Um, I brought my Ken head back. The cat has continued to knock it off the table all day. 
So you saw you saw my Pillboy, my Pillsbury Doughboy earlier, and I just have a couple of other treasures here. And I thought, you know, how much fun would it be to try and do a contour drawing of my hand holding this object, or you know, putting the finger puppet on and drawing the contour of the finger puppet on my finger. Um, or this is actually a piece of broken crystal, but I love it. Um, sort of like a crystal ball effect. Um, of course, I could always, I could be high-fiving Wonder Woman or um, doing something with the Doughboy. But anyway, uh, I wanted to pursue the idea of doing a number of drawings with our hands holding some sort of treasure. And I want to do them in contour style. So, uh, you know, before you, se you settle down or you start to do your contour drawing itself, you need to choose a tool. You need to choose a proper tool. Because a contour drawing is only about the line. Let me bring this back here. Contour drawing is all about the line. Uh, and, and this is what's telling our story here. And so we want the tool that we use to create that line to reflect the nature of the drawing. So, you know, this one I did with a pencil, and I just did it with a regular pencil. And regular pencils are fabulous drawing tools. Um, sometimes I feel like a regular pencil allows us to make a line that we aren't committed to because we have the opportunity to erase it. So there are times when I want to do a quick drawing or a quick study. I'm not going to reach for a pencil because a pencil to me means that I can make adjustments and finesse and change, and that's not the nature of a quick study. So in this case, I'm not going to choose a pencil. That's not the right tool for me. Um, you could also choose, I have um, my paint pens here, and I have them in a number of different sizes and colors. So um, just because you are drawing a line you know, try to break out of the habit of thinking of a line like a coloring book page where the lines are always black. Your lines can be whatever color you want. Your lines can be whatever thickness you wish. Um, so, you know, break, break that um, habit of thinking. Here's a great color. I love this pink. Of thinking like a coloring book page. Uh, I have this little set of fine line uh, markers in a variety of color. I love these. They make a really thin, thin line. It's very delicate. It's wonderful for detailed contours. Uh, I also really like these flare pens. You can get them in a bunch of different colors. They're a felt tip pen and uh, you can get some really beautiful lines with them too. So um, think about the tool that you want to use when you start to draw. Since your lines are going to be the only thing in the drawing itself. There's not going to be any other color or anything like that. So um, let's, let's get started. Um, I think I'm going to have to stand up in order to change my, my point of view here. So if I were to do, I'm going to pretend, or I'm going to do multiple drawings here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is figure out my, my initial placement. So this guy is going to be right here. And where am I going to start? I'm going to start with my eyes and I'm going to follow the edges that I see. And I, as I follow those, I'm going to draw them. So I'm actually looking mostly at my finger here. My peripheral, I'll be able to see what I'm doing over here, but I'm not really looking over here. So let's see, I'm gonna... So I'm starting with the eyeballs that I see. There's a little bit of a shadow there. And it comes down. And he's got a little bit of a nose, and then this goes up. And, and you'll notice that I'm not I'm not really trying to be super careful here. I'm just finding the contours of this little shape 
using the finger puppet and drawing them as I see them. And there are a few little teeth that I see here. And there's a dark shadow from my finger back inside. And there's a couple of little teeth. So this is really a matter of teaching your eye and your hand to draw what you see and not what you think that you see because you're only focusing on those edges, you're not distracted with color or anything else. It gives you the opportunity to really focus and refine drawing skills. Or I guess spatial relationships would be a better way to put it. but it also takes the pressure off of having to draw anything exact. Now I'm down into my finger. Resist the urge to start to shade and just find those edges. And go as fast or as slow as you want. And sometimes when you're drawing like this and you're just finding the edges, you may get to a point where you're trying to meet things up or meet shapes up and they don't meet quite perfectly, like what just happened right there with my hand, because this is this right here. But look, I made it work. No, there's no art police that are going to come through at some point and say, you know, we didn't get that drawn perfectly right. We're always so hard on ourselves over that sort of stuff, and we don't need to be. So that's about as far as I'm going to take this particular drawing. But do you see what I just did? I found my edges and I just delineated them with a simple line. And I kind of want to layer things, but I'm not sure. How about if I have a conversation this way? Another cool thing that you can do with drawing is build your own spatial relationships. 
it's totally okay to move things around and create your own reality. You don't have to have the entire actual drawing set up in order for it, in order for you to be able to draw it a certain way. Do you see how I just created this idea of these monsters having a conversation? Even though I only have one. It's kind of funky looking. And yes, I've already drawn my hand here pre over the in the space on my page already, but that's okay. I'm going to draw over top of it. There's really interesting things that happen when we overlap lines and forms and we play with the idea of space. We get some really interesting junctures and passages going on. Look at that, that's really cool. That jumble of fingers. I feel like I need to add some of the details in this little plastic guys. I didn't add that edge. So I'm gonna challenge you to layer a number of drawings. Uh, just play with contour and have fun. Um, there are other ways that you can do contour drawings. What, what I just showed you was a basic contour drawing approach where you take your object and your pen and you draw what you see. There are other ways that you can do it. You can challenge yourself to do your drawing in a single line and never lift your pen off the page. That's really hard. It takes a lot of planning and figuring out where your, your pen needs to go. Uh, you can do a single line where you never lift your pen off the page. You can do a single line where you never cross or go back or trace any lines that you've already drawn. You can also do a blind contour drawing. And a blind contour drawing is where you look at your object, so I would be looking right here at my object, but I would be drawing it either over here off camera, or I would have some sort of um, shelf or, or uh, a way for me to not see my page so that I'm truly not looking um, at, at the lines that I'm drawing and, and simply relying on a um, brain hand coordination. You could also do a contour drawing by touch where your object is in a bag and you are feeling it and touching it with your fingers but you're unable to see it and you're drawing it on your page. So um, I'm going to challenge you to try any one of those approaches that sounds really fascinating to you and explore the idea of line. Now the other thing that you can do once you get your your contour drawing down is you can go in and add color and play with it a little bit and that's what we're going to do tomorrow. I'm going to bring some watercolor and other approaches to contour drawings and show you how you can jazz these up a little bit. But um, I I, today I want you to just play with the lines and start to develop a sensibility for the sort of lines that you can create and have fun with little treasures in your hands. Um, if you become, if the hand itself is overwhelming for you to draw, put your treasure on the table 
and um, you know, draw it like it is. Build relationships that don't exist between your objects in your drawings. So if you have one object, draw it multiple times, like there's a whole herd of finger puppets, and have them all relate to each other. Um, so, so build a conversation or an environment uh, on the page that doesn't exist with your contour drawings. And I'm going to show you some other, excuse my reach, I have a stack of books here. Um, I'm going to show you a variety of ways that you can approach contours and, and jazz them up a little bit. So if you can see here, there's a whole bunch of other drawings underneath here. They're all contour drawings of a polar bear. So uh, the line elements or the line qualities have changed in some of the drawings. There's some thicker lines in some places, uh, but the bears all overlap. Some of them, like this bear's feet, come down into this bear's head. So um, there's some spatial play happening, but it's just the, the repetition of the form in a line-only environment or sort of a line-only conversation. This is another contour drawing where I took objects independently of each other. I had a little rubber goldfish and I did a contour drawing of that. And I, um, so these are four separate contour drawings that were placed intentionally to build the spatial perception of it being a face. So think about too how you might be able to position your contour drawings on the page and create or allude to a completely different story or something that doesn't already exist. Imagination can be a really powerful tool. This is a contour drawing that I did, excluding this. Uh, I did it with one of these, one of these pens, and when I was done, I splashed the page with water. The um, splash happened as an accident originally, but then I decided to embrace that and I threw some more water on the page and, and that's what changed these lines here. It's really quite beautiful, the effect. Uh, a perfect example of a happy accident. Um, here is a really simple contour drawing it was done on a page that already had a background. You can see some of the color. Whatever's left inside the flower shapes is what the background looked like to begin with. Um, so this is an example of doing a contour drawing over a background. The contour would be a layer over top of marks that were already there. And then I painted in the space around the drawings just like I did with the circles yesterday and added some additional pattern. This is a contour drawing done of a photograph and it also has a contour drawing in front of it of a piece of fabric that I absolutely loved, the floral design. So I'm combining two elements that didn't exist previously in the real world, creating a story with them. This contour drawing was done in Sharpie on top of a piece of palette paper. I think you saw me use that palette paper um, last time. In the last video I cut a piece of palette paper up to make my my prayer tokens. Um, so this is another instance of that paper being reused. And that's it. Now we're back to the finger puppet. So um, it, that's a really simple quick lesson for today, but I think it's one that you're going to get a lot of mileage out of. I certainly hope so. Um, I am going to take a quick peek online now and see if there are any questions. Uh, if you have a question about the process or tools or whatever, um, throw it up in the comments before I end and um, I will have an opportunity to answer it. I'm waiting for my phone to load up. Mm. Good morning everyone. Oh, Ardeth, it is so welcome to see you show up in my feed. I'm so sorry about how ill you have been and I'm really happy to see you back. Doesn't look like anybody has any contour drawing questions though. 
How fabulous is that? That means that my demo was pretty direct. I love it. So uh, I will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm going to bring some strategies with me for adding color to your contour drawings and changing them up, turning them into um, something that has more happening than just the lines on the page. And uh, then Ardith will be back with us on Monday. Yay! So if you are looking to visit some of the other videos that we have created, I have a master list of all of them with direct links as well as links to any addendum or bonus content. And that is all going to be on my website, which is KimberlySantini.com. And there's a tab there or a, um, a menu option called Journal Through It. And everything is right there under Journal Through It. So super excited to see what you share. When you do share your work online, please hashtag it, Journal Through It so that we all can see. It's become one of my favorite nighttime rituals to log in and see what everybody has been doing with the prompts. Uh, there's just such a great variety um, of interpretations and uh, I just love, I love the imagination. You guys inspire me to um, go into my own books and do some fun things. So I think that's that. Everybody have a great afternoon. We have some sunshine here in Michigan, although it's it's pretty cold, but I'll take the sun, and um, I look forward to, to seeing what you're creating and catching up with you again tomorrow. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.